So in this tutorial, we're going to start looking at a few of the Grasshopper components included with Fullagram and beginning with the sync object component. So to stream geometry from Grasshopper to Fullagram on mobile phones or HoloLens devices, you will need to explicitly choose which geometry you want to send to that device. And that's really just to prevent uh, Grasshopper sending a whole lot of junk working geometry over to uh, your mobile device that you might not want to actually see in AR. So the example that I'm going to use here is dynamically contouring this sub-D surface and um, being able to control the distance between the contours with our Grasshopper model and then sending those over uh, to our mobile device so we can preview them in augmented reality. So let's go ahead and reference our sub-D model into Grasshopper so that we can start manipulating it. And obviously this will work with mesh geometry or NURBS geometry. Um, in this example, we're using sub-D geometry, but um, as you can sync any sort of object or supported object within Grasshopper. Then we're going to use a contour component to um, create a set of contours through this object. I'm going to contour them with a number slider. And we'll then be able to adjust this number slider in Grasshopper to change the distance between those contours in our um, Grasshopper model. So I've changed the contour distance. Um, we're seeing that update in Rhino. And we can now sync these uh, with our mobile phone using a sync object component. So the sync object component is in the Fullagram um, plugin panel. In the sync toolbar, you can find the sync object component. Drop that down, connect up the objects that you want to sync, and they'll immediately appear in Fullagram. The sync object component has uh, quite a few properties that you can adjust from the right click menu. And we'll go through these starting at the bottom. So if you're synchronizing curves, which we are in this case, we can specify a custom curve thickness or curve radius uh, down at the bottom of the properties here. And I'm going to go ahead and make that quite a bit thinner because I'm working with a scaled down model uh, in this case, and I don't need those curves to be so thick. So let's set the cur curve radius to be 1, and we'll see that update and we get some nice thin curves uh, in AR. We can also change the material um, of these curves uh, using this material edit, like very, very simple material editor here. So we can change the diffuse color of the curves and the transparency of those curves in real time um, just through this right click interface. We can also include texture coordinates and material textures if we want to within Grasshopper and change the specular and gloss properties of this material. If we're syncing solid objects um, from Rhino and Grasshopper as well, you can choose to synchronize only the outline or occlusion of those objects. So to demonstrate how that works, I'm going to jump into our layers here and I'm going to hide our sub-D model. So we'll turn that off and I'll also hide I'll jump out of my curves layer, hide my curve. So we're only looking at contours now. And we can use another sync object component to synchronize the sub-D model itself. So now we're sending this over from Grasshopper. And if we, this will help us explain what these outline and occlusion materials do. So the outline material is going to stream the silhouette of this object um, from any viewing angle. And that's really, really useful f during fabrication when you're trying to get the silhouette uh, to match a particular object or when you're trying to place an object within a cage that's defined in AR, locating and orienting that object in 3D space. You can set um, the occlusion property uh, to make that object invisible and it's just going to occlude any other physical objects which are behind it. Through. So to give you an example of how that works, Let's turn off the occlusion for this, this object. We'll model in a box in Rhino. 
and I'll position the box over here so it's going to be in front of our model. And let's say we want this, well, let's say this box is going to be a physical object. Um, maybe it's part of a physical model. And we want that physical model to occlude this virtual model that's sitting behind it. We could reference that geometry into Grasshopper. We can hide the model in Rhino. Just wait for my Rhino to finish freaking out. We'll hide it. So it's not being streamed from Rhino anymore. And we'll use another sync object component to demonstrate how the occlusion material works. So now we're synchronizing that box. If I set this as an occlusion material, the box cuts out all of the objects behind it. So if we had this box representing a physical box, which was going to be in this same position, we can essentially fake that physical box occluding uh, any holographic models um, behind that object. Some other features of the um, sync object component, let's just have a look at them. Uh, setting quite explicitly whether or not an object is movable, clickable, or grabbable. So if I try and drag this uh, model around in AR, I'm not able to if it's synced by um, within Grasshopper using sync object component, and that's because by default objects aren't movable, clickable, or grabbable. So if we toggle these on, we can change whether or not an object can be edited in Grasshopper. So I'm, I've made that movable. And you have the same settings for detecting clicks on an object. So when I tap on it, we can detect that tap with other Grasshopper components or grabbable, which will let us pick this up and reorient it with the HoloLens. And that's the sync object component.